Vintage Hollywood will forever be synonymous with its elegant allure and unforgettable performances from timeless icons. However, beneath the veneer of glamour lies a dark truth. Hollywood is a realm where resilience is essential, and many have found themselves grappling with the intoxicating effects of fame. Today, we unveil the roster of Hollywood's most notorious alcoholics. Prepare to be shocked as we delve into the depths of their struggles, some of which ended in the most tragic of ways. If you're curious to uncover their identities, stay tuned for the revelations ahead. Commencing our list today is none other than the esteemed English actor, Oliver Reed. This captivating blue-eyed figure etched his name in cinematic history, with standout performances in blockbuster hits like The Trap, Bill Sykes, and Oliver. In 1971, his acting prowess earned him the prestigious title of the fifth most popular star at the box office. On screen, Reed exuded charisma, dedication, and an undeniable presence, cementing his status as one of the era's most beloved actors from the late 1960s to the 1980s. However, beneath the glare of the spotlight lay Reed's well-documented struggles with alcohol. Renowned author Robert Sellers chronicled in his book, Hellraisers, the life and inebriated times of Richard Burton, Peter O'Toole, Richard Harris, and Oliver Reed. The actor's astonishing feat of consuming 100 pints in a mere 24 hours. Alongside his counterparts, Reed earned a reputation as one of the greatest hellraisers to grace the pub scene, highlighting the extent of his indulgence in alcohol-fueled revelry. Yet, this indulgence proved to be his undoing. While on a filming hiatus during Ridley Scott's Gladiator in 1999, Reed frequented an Irish bar in Valletta, Malta, imbibing an alarming array of alcoholic beverages, including whiskey, rum, lager, and cognac. A confrontation with young Navy sailors ensued, culminating in an ill-fated arm-wrestling bout. Tragically, Reed's life came to a sudden end that very night, as he collapsed and passed away before reaching the hospital. Another icon who fell under the throes of alcohol was the actor John Barrymore. In fact, alcohol consumed him and his siblings. Not a lot of people are aware of who this once big shot was, but most would identify him as the washed-up alcoholic actor. His life was already a hot topic even at such a young age. Growing up with an alcoholic father who preferred to spend time with his grandmother, he was still a minor when he made it a habit of drinking his grandmother's visitor's half-empty wine glasses until he passed out. His drinking only got worse when his, gra his grandmother passed away when he was 14. From there, the young Barrymore confessed that he was more or less an alcoholic drunkard to a doctor. Despite this, his acting prowess was greatly applauded by many, and he was a natural when it came to light comedy in various plays. In the later years of his life, he became so dependent on alcohol that producers refused to employ him, and he even scored various roles playing drunks. Death claimed him on May 19, 1942, in the middle of a line recording of Romeo and Juliet. The once great actor collapsed and was taken to Hollywood Presbyterian Hospital, where he died due to cirrhosis of the liver and kidney failure complicated by pneumonia. Despite her illustrious career, Rita Hayworth, an American actress and one of the leading stars of Hollywood's golden age, tragically finds her name among the ranks of today's worst alcoholics. Like many of the revered figures mentioned in this catalogue, Hayworth endured profound suffering behind the glittering facade of stardom. Her journey began at a tender age, coerced into the world of dance, where she caught the discerning eye of Fox Film Corporation's Winfield Sheehan, propelling her into a series of minor roles that gradually elevated her status. Yet, this ascent came at a steep cost. Hindered by her Spanish heritage, Hayworth found herself typecast, confined to roles as the exotic seductress. Despite her remarkable success in Hollywood, lauded as the epitome of beauty and sensuality by the press, Hayward's personal life was marred by turmoil. While she was adored as the quintessential pin-up girl during World War II, her romantic entanglements were fraught with manipulation and exploitation. Despite her outward success, Hayworth suffered in silence, devoid of genuine companionship and misunderstood by those around her. Even her second husband, Orson Welles, failed to acknowledge her struggles with alcohol, a fact dismissed until late in their marriage. Her son, Yasmin Aga Khan, bore witness to her tragic descent into alcoholism, 
unable to intervene as she spiraled into an alcoholic breakdown that led to hospitalization. Alcohol, the bane of Hayworth's existence, masked the insidious onset of Alzheimer's disease, a diagnosis delayed until 1980. For two decades, she endured the harrowing symptoms of this debilitating illness, robbed of her identity and dignity. Hayworth's final years were a cruel testament to the ravages of alcoholism and Alzheimer's, culminating in her passing at the age of 68, a victim of the complications wrought by her afflictions. Continuing with the list of alcoholics is another hellraiser, the Welsh actor Richard Burton. He rose to prominence as one of the more impressive Shakespearean actors during the 1950s and was even highly considered the successor to Laurence Olivier. Sadly, he was not able to rise to their expectations, and it didn't help that Burton was also notorious for his heavy drinking, which many believed was the cause of his talent going to waste. It was no secret that the Welsh actor was an alcoholic throughout his adult life, and English author Robert Sellers even said that Burton was known to consume at least three to four bottles of hard liquor daily. The actor even almost drank himself to death during the filming of the movie the Klansman, where he was dried out at a hospital in Santa Monica, California. Many of his scenes had to be done either while he was lying or sitting, because he was unable to stand on his own. The actor even admitted to his co-star later on that he didn't remember making the movie. Good times aside, Richard Burton's alcoholism got so bad that he used to take antabuse to stop himself from excessive drinking. Alcohol was also the reason why he believed his marriage to Elizabeth Taylor fell apart. At 41, his body was already declining rapidly and was already limping by his mid-40s. Apart from suffering from a myriad of diseases like cirrhosis, dermatitis, arthritis, and an enlarged kidney, in the end, he died at the age of 58 due to an intracerebral hemorrhage. On the next Hollywood heavy drinker, we have the American actor, comedian and writer William Claude Dukenfield, nicknamed W.C. Fields. He became famous as a silent juggler and was known for his raspy drawl and pompous vocabulary. Surprisingly, his character often portrayed a fondness for alcohol, which he didn't actually share until he felt the loneliness of constant travel. In the end, he began to drink regularly after giving up his career as a juggler. If there was one role that cemented his role as an alcoholic, it was his portrayal of Professor Henry R. Quayle in the 1933 pre-code comedy, International House. In the film, he was an aviator who had an unquenchable thirst for beer, a characteristic that the actor adopted in real life. He was also one of the many actors who filmed while inebriated, yet surprisingly, their intoxication only added an edge to their performance which made the viewers love their characters even more. Sadly, Fields suffered the slow demise of his career and spent the last 22 months of his life at a sanitarium in California, where he died at the age of 66 on Christmas. Multi-award winner William Holden is also on our list today, and he probably has the most tragic ending out of all the actors here. Holden won a series of prestigious awards such as the Academy Award for Best Actor and the Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Lead Role in a limited anthology series or movie. He had a series of good films and roles that made him popular in Hollywood. But like all good things, nothing lasts forever. When the 1960s rolled around, he found himself not only competing with the new generation of actors, but his popularity was also declining. This made him turn to alcohol, and it even got worse because it was an open secret for years now that the actor has quite a reputation when it comes to drinking. Despite this notoriety, Holden was steadfast in his craft, continuing to take on roles right until the end. He died on November 12, 1981, as he bled after suffering from a horrible fall that cut his forehead. According to the Los Angeles County Coroner's autopsy report, the actor was intoxicated and slipped on a rug, hitting his head as he bled to death. Continuing our exploration of Hollywood's troubled souls, we encounter Montgomery Clift, renowned for his striking looks and profound acting talent. A four-time Academy Award nominee, Clift's portrayal of moody and sensitive characters solidified his status as a pioneer of method acting, alongside luminaries like Marlon Brando and James Dean. Blessed with wealth, fame, and adulation from the masses, Clift seemed to have it all. However, 
Fate dealt him a cruel hand when he endured a devastating car accident. Returning home from a soiree hosted by Elizabeth Taylor and her husband, Clift's life took a tragic turn. Found trapped beneath the wreckage, his injuries were severe, requiring Taylor herself to extract a tooth lodged in his tongue. Despite undergoing extensive plastic surgery and bravely returning to the set just two months later, Clift grappled with persistent pain, seeking solace in alcohol and other substances. Although hailed for his resilience, Clift's physical transformation post-accident drew scrutiny, with many attributing his decline to the visible alterations in his appearance. Tragically, his struggles culminated in a fatal heart attack at the age of 45 in his New York City residence. Speculation swirled regarding the role of substance abuse in his untimely demise, a theory substantiated by autopsy findings revealing underlying health issues exacerbated by his alcohol consumption. Montgomery Clift's poignant tale serves as a somber reminder of the toll exacted by Hollywood's relentless demands and the perils of seeking solace in self-destructive behaviors. Wizard of Oz star Judy Garland also sadly suffered from alcoholism and substance abuse. Despite her fame and fortune, like many young starlets, Garland suffered from her personal life at a tender age, and it didn't help that the pressures of her stardom tormented her physical and mental health. What's even worse is that many of the people in the industry manipulated her, claiming that she was not attractive enough and forcing her to change her appearance. Because of this, Garland leaned on alcohol and several substances, and the pressure continued to plague her for years to come. On the evening of June 22, 1969, the actress was found by her husband of three months, Mickey Deans, unconscious and unresponsive. He immediately called Scotland Yard, and the actress was pronounced dead due to a barbiturate overdose, ruled as accidental. She was only 47. Despite this, an attending specialist claimed that the actress was already living on borrowed time because of cirrhosis. Another great actor who died a terrible death due to alcohol is the multifaceted Jack Cassidy, an accomplished singer and theater director. Cassidy won many accolades, such as a Tony Award and a Grammy Award, and was even nominated for a Primetime Emmy multiple times. Sadly, to be an artist is to struggle with life, which is something Cassidy did, despite everything he achieved and owned. His eldest son even wrote how he grew worried about his father's increasing alcohol abuse, especially since Jack Cassidy suffered not only from alcoholism, but also from bipolar disorder. The man of many talents met his untimely demise one night on December 11, 1976. Prior to his death, Cassidy even asked his ex-wife, Shirley, if she would fancy sharing a drink with him at his California apartment, only for the latter to refuse, not knowing that this was the last time she would be able to talk to him. The following morning, the actor lit a cigarette and fell asleep shortly on his couch. He dropped the cigarette, which burned the couch, and quickly spread throughout the whole apartment. After the fire was put out, they recovered a charred body near the front door of the apartment, which was identified as Cassidy, based on his dental records. Moreover, they also found the body wearing a ring that bore the Cassidy family crest. In the end, Jack Cassidy's family cremated his remains and scattered them in the Pacific Ocean. American film and TV actress Gail Russell also met her demise due to alcohol, which is an unfortunate way to go for the heiress of Santa Monica. The actress was blessed with such beauty that it landed her a contract with Paramount at the age of 18, and she made her debut the following year in the movie Henry Aldrich Gets Glamour. She got her first taste of alcohol when the head of makeup on the set of The Uninvited suggested to the young actress that she drink alcohol to calm her nerves. It did its magic, but at the same time, it also spelled Russell's slow descent to her demise. She was also under a lot of pressure, which is why it didn't come as a surprise that she was a known alcoholic. By 1950, she was only 36 when she met her creator, and right before that, she would periodically stop drinking and take it up again. Russell died due to liver damage brought on by acute and chronic alcoholism, and was found by two of her neighbors who grew worried after not seeing the actress for several days. She was found with an empty bottle of vodka by her side, and her home was filled with empty bottles as well. 
And if we're talking about one such icon who died a tragic and depressing death due to alcohol, we could not leave out one of the bathing beauties, Marie Provost. The actress rose to prominence during the silent film era and was credited with 121 silent and sound films. Max Sennett was the first to discover this beauty and had her signed with Universal, but it was at Warner Brothers that Provost's career as a leading lady bloomed. She was notable for her performances in The Marriage Circle, Three Women, and Kiss Me Again. But unfortunately, her career declined at an alarming rate once Warner Brothers dropped her. As if that wasn't bad enough, she suffered a lot of problems in her personal life, including the death of her mother and her crumbling marriage to the actor Kenneth Harlan. Provost fell into depression and started to not only binge eat, but also turn to alcohol, which caused her to gain weight and struggle to secure more roles. In the end, her heavy drinking led her to the grave, as acute alcoholism claimed her at the age of 40 on January 21, 1937. She died a poor woman, with her estate only valued at $300, but her death prompted the foundation of the motion picture and television country house and hospital. Closing our discussion of Hollywood's troubled souls is the legendary American actor and comedian Jackie Gleason. Renowned not only for his comedic brilliance, but also for his talents as a writer and composer, Gleason left an indelible mark on both the entertainment and music scenes. However, behind his jovial facade lay a somber past, marked by paternal abandonment and the premature loss of his elder brother. Gleason's fondness for alcohol was no secret, as he openly declared himself a drunkard rather than an alcoholic. Despite occasional drunken antics, his unmatched talent ensured his continued success in both the music and acting realms. However, as time passed, his drinking escalated, transforming him from a merry figure to a cantankerous soul prone to fits of rage. While his career flourished, Gleason's health declined, culminating in his passing on June 24, 1987, at the age of 71. Though beset by various ailments, it was colon cancer that ultimately claimed his life ending the journey of one of Hollywood's most iconic figures. With this, we conclude our exploration of Hollywood's darkest chapters. If you found this discussion insightful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for our latest updates. Until next time, may you remain golden amidst life's trials and tribulations.